everybody, Raziel here, coming back at you with another Smite God build for the Xbox One, or any platform for that matter. This week we are bringing to the table the Morgan, Phantom Queen, for patch 4.3. She fills the role of mage for the Celtic Pantheon, the newest Pantheon in Smite, uh, and she's the first god for it. And she is a misdirecting, burst damaging god that can easily shut you down with your own tactics real quick. This video is intended for those just starting out playing the Morgan, those who need a refresher with the god, or those who think they're going to destroy the Morgan walking up the lane when poof, damn, an illusion, and then she's behind you, stunning you in place, bursting you down, and just when you think you've gotten away, you're staring at yourself. But it isn't a damn mirror. You dead. We'll start out with her abilities, or kit as I call them, then go over the relics and item build, and finish off with ability combos and fighting scenarios. If you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future smite guides. Also feel free to leave a comment below requesting any future gods or to say hello just for the hell of it. Also I've set up a clan on Xbox One called Ve Victus. it's open to anyone. Uh, we're kind of small, kind of casual, uh, but we won't, you know, we're, anyone can join if they like. The, I'll leave a little description in the comments below, or the description below. <laughs> Now let's get into those abilities. Before we get started, I have to go over a little housekeeping that I have for every video. I play with the Savage layout on Xbox One, which may look different from what you're playing with. Also the PS4 has different buttons and PC and Mac have a different UI altogether. So as such, from now on I'll be calling out her abilities as 1, 2, 3, and 4, with the 1 ability all the way over to the left, and the 4, or ultimate, being on the right. Hopefully this clears up any possible confusion later on in the video, but let's get into it. Alright, so we're just going to start off with her passive here, which is called Doomsayer. Uh, it's a basic attack stimulant, or stim. Uh, it's passive, obviously, because it's a passive. Uh, every third hit of her hit chain explodes, dealing damage to all enemies within a range and dooming all enemies hit. Doomed enemies will take an additional basic attack damage over time. So what this means is on your third basic attack, which she's a ranged, she's a mage, so she's a ranged god. Well, not all mages are ranged, but she's a ranged mage god. I don't even know what the hell I was just trying to say. Anyway, on the third hit, basic hits, it kind of explodes and dooms anything within a certain radius and anything doomed will take additional damage up to 9% of the target's max XP over the next 3 seconds or so. It's a nice little thing just to be wary of when you're basic attacking make sure you hit that third hit or third basic attack to get that doom to spread. Her one is called Deadly Aspects. It's a charge up kind of ability. Uh, you can cancel it. Uh, when activated, the Morgan begins combining the power from all three of her forms, and when activated again, they simultaneously damage and stun enemies in front of them. So this is this is her initiate. This is her chase. Uh, it's it's pretty good. Uh, I use it a lot to set up friendlies, pretty much. She is, she's a lot of setup uh, in addition to being able to do a lot of burst at the same time. Well, not a lot of setup. This is pretty much it, but I'll get into it once we get into our ultimate. A little bit more. Her two is called Dark Omen. This is her wave clear. Uh, and this is actually her her uh, burst damage ability and maybe what's going to do most, quote unquote, most of the damage, depending if it works out. Uh, the Morgan launches a wave of dark magic at her enemies that deals damage, deals bonus damage to minions, and applies an omen to enemy gods for 8 seconds. Excuse me. Gods with the omen will take an additional bonus damage the next time they're hit by aim any damaging ability. So what that means, she throws out her dark wave, it hits a god, then it will mark them with an hourglass. If, if you played against or with uh, Morgan, you've seen an hourglass over the god's head. And when that hourglass runs out, it's over. But if, say, you yourself or one of your teammates hits that god with a damaging ability so say um, Chalk throws his axe out and it hits the, an enemy or enemies with the hourglass over the head 
then the damage that Chalk throws out is applied, plus an additional burst damage from the Dark Omen. So it's kind of like, it's almost like a Nox um, explosion from a god kind of thing. I, I don't know if that's a good way to explain it, but it's it, it does a lot of damage. Anyway, the initial damage, oh, I forgot to say this on her one. Uh, the scaling on it, on her one is 80% of her magical power. That's a pretty, pretty decent chunk. On this one, the initial damage is 40% of her magical power. Against minions, and it's, it's an additional 20%. So that's 60% scaling against minions. And then against gods, it's another 40%. So this is a 80% bonus damage scaling. 80% uh, scaling, including the bonus damage. I had to think about that for a moment. So what that means is her 1 and her 2 essentially can do 80% of her magical power against gods. That's not too shabby. That's those. That makes up for her 3 and her her 4 is pretty, pretty can be pretty overpowered. Um, so her 3 is called Confusion. It's a stealth um, of sorts, she creates a phantom of herself while becoming stealth and increasing her movement speed. Similar, similar to Loki, except Loki just stealths. There's no illusion. Um, the phantom runs to the target area, so you kind of have to point where the illusion wants to go. Deals no damage and will die if it takes any damage. If the Morgan attacks or takes damage, she will be revealed and lose her increased movement speed. So, what this means, for, for, right off the bat. You have, in order for this thing to proc, you have to put the illusion down. Now, if you're facing a wall and you can't physically put that illusion there because of the wall, it will not cast the spell. So, if you're trying to run away, make sure you pop that down somewhere where there's no wall close by and do your juking or whatever your magic. Now, if she takes damage while stealth, then she'll be revealed and she'll lose her movement speed. Now, if she throws that illusion down and the illusion gets killed, she still stealths and has movement speed. But they obviously at that point know that she's there. Or not there, I guess is the better way to do it. I've thrown out her stealth and had in like an Anubis Rapid. Or um, you can throw the stealth out into an Artemis Trap to clear that. So it, it, it's pretty decent. Uh, for that kind of scenario too, but all it is is pretty much an escape for the most part It can be used to initiate, but I usually reserve it for an escape or if you're trying to Misdirect somebody or a group of people say like in joust like say oh the Morgan's heading to damage And you're going to actually steal their mana you can use it in that scenario as well her ultimate is called changeling now. This is this is the OP Ish ability. This is one of the <laughs> this is one of the reasons why she was so buggy at release. I mean, she's since been quote unquote fixed. I mean, there's kind of some quirks about her, but it's not too bad. But I mean, it's it's because this ultimate right here is just ridiculous. This makes her a counter for everybody. Essentially, you can't really counter her because she can be you. If that makes sense and it will in a second the Morgan selects a god from the current match and becomes a copy of them and cleanses herself of all effects okay people forget that part she copies all of the current stats and may use their abilities for the duration she retains her own relics and cannot use consumables so she can't use potions or a frenzy you know she, oh, that's a red that's a ritual award maybe I don't know she can't do that the rank of her abilities will transfer to the skills of the god she copies. The abilities cooldown will be increased to match the target god's ultimate if she uses it while transformed. You may ho hover over a target and cancel to pre-select them so you... And then it stops. So you don't have to worry about it during the match, essentially, is I think what they're trying to say there. Anyway, when she was released... And you were trying to select someone in her ultimate, which I'll show later at the later in the video. The camera angle will walk, will move around with her. So if you're trying to select someone like on this circle, which you'll see, on the bottom, she'd be looking down. I, it was just a mess, a complete mess. And I I didn't pre-select. I don't know if it was that working properly at release. 
So it was a pain in the ass trying to master her to, to rank one. Uh, but I did. And since then, she's been fixed. And I've actually used it ranked a few times, and I've done pretty well. Uh, and then I've also had issues where we got, like, some beat-ass rando, and, and we just got uh, steamrolled. But I would still hold my own, like, doing 13 kills and stuff. We would just wouldn't be able to uh, clench the match because the rando was feeding, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, you want to select pre-select. That is one of the things you need to do with this ultimate is pre-select. Think of your strategy if you need to pop it real quick. And if you're going to set up for uh, a team fight, pre-select before you go in. Don't do it during the match because things get hectic as all hell. You're going to be illusioned. You're going to be stealthing and trying to stun and throw your dark omen and everything. And then trying to select someone else, it can be a pain in the ass. When you play her enough, maybe it'll just come second nature, but always try to pre-select. That is her abilities in a nutshell. Pretty good. As you can see, the A is blinking. I don't know exactly why it does that. And I think once you pre-select, if you look down at her passive over to the left of my health bar, that's where the portrait of the god she selects. Once you do that, I believe that A and blinking thing disappears. Anyway, so next we're going to get into... Uh, the item builds and relics and everything else. So let's roll uh, right into that beautiful bean footage. So now we're going to get into her item build and her relics and everything else. Now, I always say this in every video, in some form, these items and relics are situational. Everything is situational in this game. You're going to have your core items, and then you're going to have your items that are going to be flex items, kind of uh, the second half of your item build. And it all depends on what your team and their team comp is, and especially with the Morrigan, where she, be she can become someone from that other team as well. So um, things, things, things can vary. Now, the, the item build I'm going to go with, um, the first one is going to be primarily for Conquest. The second one's going to be primarily for Joust or Siege or something else. You can use the Conquest build for other other ones as well, but the, the main difference between them uh, is the starter items. Um, is the main one, and you know maybe a couple other items again. But for the most part, you can mix and match for any god, uh, game mode. Uh, Assault, I don't go over at all because it's a whole other beast with the fact you can't go back to your fountain. That being said... Let's get into this. This should help you guys out uh, from the get-go. And let's start with the relics. Relics. Again, you know, situational, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I say it all the time. More times than not, you're probably going to want to go Purification Beads. Mostly because she doesn't have any real means of escape. So if you go stealth and you get hit for some reason, you're you're stuck. And if you get, tr you know, trapped in a wrap or a, in a mirror freeze or something else, you might want to pop these beads and try to get out of dodge. Or pop the beads and then stealth. I mean, you're probably going to need beads. Period. Now, she can be run. She's a mage, so primarily you would think she'd be in uh, the mid lane. She can be potentially be used as jungle. And maybe even a little bit of ADC, but that might be a stretch. So... Uh, she might get ganked from, you know, a, a guardian, a support, or the jungler and everything else. So purification beads, I think, is a must. And I always put them, actually, in this slot because it's easier on my, on the savage build because it's X and it's closer to my thumb. Second item, it could also, again, be the first item if you wish. And if you feel confident enough would probably be Sunder because her, her bonus damage and everything else that occurs from her two would work great probably with the Sunder spear, Sundering spear. Um, this is this is definitely a damage if you're confident with hit it. I mean, it's got some range and everything else. You could also just go Aegis. You could also go Sprint. 
or whatever the hell it's called now, what is it called, Heavenly Wings, because again, she doesn't really have that much of an escape, so Heavenly Wings will help her get out of, get out of dodge. I want to go with Sundering Spear. Again, this could also be her first item, and you could pick up Purification Bead second. If they don't have much for CC, or if you're just confident enough to, to use the god in a way that you don't have to worry about um, getting uh, shut down or rooted in place, etc etc so for her for her starter for her conquest build if I could speak we're gonna go sands of time now you could also you could also go and prepare shroud here but you have to kill the enemy to get the the restoration and everything else and I'm not a real fan of that it's not as good as uh, death toll on the physical um, god uh, side but sands of time right now gives you 20 magical power that's not bad right off the bat gives you some mp5 and it gives you 10 percent cooldown reduction and it also gives you an additional two mp5 per 10 percent of your missing mana so you're missing 20 percent of your missing of your mana you got four mp5 on top of the five mp5 so at the very least you're gonna get seven mp5 which early game is not too shabby at all so Sands of Time is the way to go. One can never hide. The cooldown reduction helps too. And then you're going to probably go into, say, boots. Um, some form of level one or two two tier boots, second tier boots. I can't remember the exact uh, amount of money things cost. And then probably a couple health potions, a couple mana potions to just help you sustain and maybe get you to as close to level five as you can, if not level five. And then after that, so. One build is she does you know eighty percent scaling on her on her physical, I mean her one I don't know the physical where the hell did that come from, eighty percent potentially on her two, so shoes of the magi are a good pickup for her boots. Forty five magical power in addition to the twenty I think you got from Sands of Time. Magical penetration and movement the standard movement speed so that she'll be hitting pretty hard once you get boots online so that's not bad. And then you want to roll right into Book of Thoth. You want to get those stacks going as soon as you can. Right off the bat, without the stacks, you get 125 mana, another 15 MP5, which is going to help her sustain or stay in the lane longer, and another 100 magical power right there. So essentially, her, her abilities give her 100 magical, 180 magical, no, no, 180 magical power. It gives you 80% or 80 more damage based on this this item alone okay and then the passive is you gain 10 mana per stack and uh, three percent of that mana is converted to magical power so you even get more magical power so you get 10 per stack and it goes up to 75 so that's 750 mana plus three percent of that oh freaking math it, you get um, so you get more magical power it's a good item pick it up try to get those stacks going as fast as you can after that, Polynomicon. Lifesteal, again, helps to sustain in a lane, and it works wonders with her two. You pop her two, and you just see the green numbers popping up from all those minions. It's delicious. It gives you 75 magical power. Awesome. 300 more mana, and 12% magical lifesteal. In the passive, after using an ability, your next basic attack, within 8 seconds, deals 75% of your magical power as additional damage. It can only apply once every three seconds. That's not too bad. But the thing is, I mean, if you time it right, say you hit you basic attack one, two, and then you throw in an ability and polynomicon procs, and then you hit you with your doom, it's just good. Good all around. I, I just it's very helpful once you get this item period. It helps you sustain. At this point, you you got a decent amount of stacks going. You're going to be hitting pretty hard. You don't have much for cooldown, but, you know, you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that sounds. Uh, next, you could go into Obsidian Shard. It gives you another magical power, but it gives you penetration, a lot of penetration. Oops, you know, I don't have a pop filter yet, so hopefully that P for penetration didn't hurt your ears. Sorry about that, guys. 
And after that, Rod of the Booty. Right here. More magical power, more MP5, and it increases more magical power. I mean, by the time you get this item, you are hitting hard. Hard. With between your one and your two. It's just... Mm, mm, mm. That's me. You know, you can't see me actually doing it, but I'm like punching and stuff. It's crazy good. She, uh, just 80% scaling on her one and two. Just remember that. Just remember that. I mean, 60% against minions on her two. So, at this point, if you haven't already... Sell, sell the sands of time. You don't need it. And you can finish off with Spear Desolation. Or you can finish off with uh, Chronos Pendant. Uh, it depends, you know, what you need. You know, it could go defensive. Uh, if you want just pure damage, you could go, you know, Spear Desolation. Actually, I don't know if that's pure damage anymore. Yeah, yeah, but it gives you more magical penetration and it also gives you a cooldown reduction. So I go Spirit Desolation. It's not as strong as it was last season, but it's still a decent late game item, kind of, kind of a luxury item. It's like, okay, I'm gonna get this, um, whatever. If people don't like it, just leave a comment below. Tell me what other one you want to put in. Pretty much what it boils down to. That is the conquest build right there. Let me. You know, this should get you where you where you need to be by late game. You're gonna be hitting hard. Got all these stacks and everything else, and it's just a nasty build. A lot of people just write her off because of how buggy she was at release, but she is played well and and with teammates who actually coordinate with you. If you can coordinate with your teammates and you're using her, you guys can do a lot of damage. A lot of damage. So I'm gonna sell these now and we're gonna go into what would be the joust build what I've used in Joust. Okay, so since I don't use a starter item in Joust, I just try to you know get as close as I can. So it boots two probably and then then the three mana, three health potions, etc. Uh, we go I go shoes of focus. I mean it still gives you magical power, still gives you mana. There's no penetration. I don't think it's it's only five less magical power. But it gives you cooldown reduction as well. And an early game, sometimes that cool reduction is great. The next item I go into is just Book of Toth, uh, Thoth, however you freaking pronounce it. Because I want to get those stacks going as soon as possible. Because chances are, if I have a hunter on my team, they're going to be running Transcendence or, or Devo Gloves or something. They're going to be stacking as well. So trying to get these stacks going as soon as you can. After that, Chronos Pendant. Why? Because I want that cooldown reduction. This brings me up to, I think, what, 30? I'm going to check. Yeah, so we're almost capped on cooldown reduction. And the the magical power is decent. You know, you get 25 MP5, which is great. Keep her sustained, keep her in lane longer. But the passive, you know, that they added to this this season, every, um, I think, 10 seconds, it removes one second from your abilities. And this will mostly apply to her her ultimate because earl definitely early game when she uses her ultimate the cooldown on it is ridiculous just ridiculous and it's, i mean it's overpowered so it, it hurts my head uh, so the the 30 30 percent cooldown reduction helps out a lot at this point you might probably have one or two points or two you know, obviously even a one point but two or three points into into it and the cooldown won't be as long but this will help out a lot and then after this, you know, back into Polynomicon. One can never have. And after that, you know, you know, it's again it's situational. I mean, you want to hit hard, go go with the Rod of Tahuti. You want some penetration, you can go Obsidian Shard. Um, it you know, it's a really good question. Sometimes you know, I might go Divine Ruin. I might sometimes I might even throw in um, the Soul Reaver, or this Ethereal Staff, which gives me magical power and. A, uh, crowd control reduction and also deals additional 5% of their max health. So it's not as much I'm gonna do that. As much as um, say the Soul Reaver, but the Soul Reaver proc time is a lot a lot longer. And let's oops, let's just see what that cost is just, just so I'm not talking on my ass. They take 10% every 40 seconds, so if they can do if you think about it, 5% every 10. So within 40 seconds, 
That's eight times five. No, no, it's four. It's four seconds. Sorry, four. To, you know, four times ten. Oops, I hit a button there. So that's four times five. It's twenty percent. So if you get more procs with this, you could potentially get four procs of this, and the amount of time you could proc Soul Reaver, you could potentially do more damage with this. Right there, right off the bat. So Ethereal Staff might be better in most cases than Soul Reaver, and the, the crowd control reduction helps too. You can also put this in the conquest build if you like. So that's that. That's those are the two builds I always, I recommend. Mix and match. Try them both out as is. Try try your version out. Leave comments below what you think maybe should be in her her item build. Um, and you know, we'll see. We'll see who's who's right. Who feels more comfortable doing what. I don't know where the hell I'm going with this conversation right now. So let's get into the next part, which is combos and fight scenarios and whatnot. That should be interesting. All right, so now we're getting into the nitty gritty or, or whatever pun or coin. Uh, there's the pop filter issue again, but we're going to get into her, <laughs> her combos and everything else. Now, she really only has two combos. Potentially, because only really has two damaging abilities that she's going to use enough time to actually go over this. So she's unique because of her ultimate. Let's just go over here to Odin Square and say hello. Hey, one, two, three, and there's the explosion and the little dooming proc there, and you can see the damage that's happening there. Now let's now let's actually attack again once he's doomed. One. To explosion and see so it doesn't matter that just demonstrates it doesn't matter you don't need to attack to get that extra dooming proc there and that would have done nine percent of his health over those three seconds here we go again and you can see so what 30 nine percent of his health is 36 whatever the hell that adds up to so that's that's the proc there that's her, her passive and you can even go one, two, miss, and then three on the third one. So you don't have to hit him three times. You just need to hit the third one, essentially. So just be wary of how where you at are at in your your, your uh, attack chain. Her one, you summon them right here. There is no time limit to have these summoned, I don't believe. And you just cancel, and they go away. Alright, so we'll go over that here. Uh, so we hit him with one, and it stuns. Like you can see, it's kind of a reverse cone. So the closer you are, the more chance you are to actually hit them, and the more chance you have to actually stun more than one as well. And I'll demonstrate that over here on this, um, this camp here. Ready? I can stun all three. And. I just killed them all, <laughs> but woohoo. So that was that. And the next time, actually, yeah. Her two is the, you know, the wave clear, essentially. Uh, you know, you, you can hit all the minions in a line here. It'll do, you know, 60% burst damage potentially against minions, 80% uh, scaling, I mean, not burst damage, scaling against gods. And you know, it's just gonna throw it out there, and then you can see the hourglass there. And if you hit him again, it does. Bro you saw the extra extra number there pop up. That's bonus damage right there. Her one, you know, you can you can throw it around anywhere. Let's see. If I threw, you know, I'll, first time I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it right. Here. Actually, let me show you. Right there. I can't. I can't place it right here. I'm pushing the button. It's not letting me. So if I'm trying to run away, make sure you, it's it's colored. You know. So and there it goes. And I'm stealth. I'm a little bit faster, and I can maybe sneak up over here. It disappears, and then there I am. Now if it's attacked, I'm not. I don't think I get disappeared. Uh, let's throw it at Ra and see if I disappear once it's attacked, just to demonstrate. Nope, see, I am still stealthed, even though I was killed. Now, hopefully he doesn't proc over here. 
No, he's still far over there. Okay, and just one more thing. If you want to try to sneak up or gank, you know, say if there's an opening here, and you send her that way, she's going to go around and try to get in there, and you could go that way and get him. So she has some kind of intelligence. She's not going to just, you know, run into the wall here, you know, just keep, or into the corner, trying to keep going. She'll try to find the correct path to the destination you want her to go. Uh, she does kind of look stupid doing it, but it still might fool someone, because some randos might walk like that. Whatever. So, we're going to go over her combos before we get into the ultimate, because the ultimate's by itself, essentially. So, there are two essential combos you can do. You can you can initiate with using your three to try to sneak up. I usually reserve the three to run away if need be. But you know, if you're confident enough where you sneak up behind them, you can hit them with your yeah. two and then your one for that bonus damage, and then just hit them a couple times there. Boom. Now let's see if I can do that chain I described earlier. The other combo is you initiate with your one and then follow up with the two. Alright, so we're gonna go one, two, chain, chain, doom, and then that, and then your teammates will j do whatever damage to him and he'll get bursted down. And so you saw there the chain, I attacked twice, used an, abil um, an ability or whatever, and it doomed him, and then I hit him again with an ability. I mean, it works. So the Polynomicon would work proc there. I don't know how much extra damage it would because it's the Doom passive, but it's a possibility. Just be wary of it again. Now her ultimate. Her ultimate, I can't really go over the ultimate. If you want to know how to use her ultimate, go to every god build I have done before this. Go to every god build I do after this and learn the combos and fighting scenarios because that's essentially what it is. You can change to any god within the match and you'll need to know the combos essentially for that P uh, particular god. And then after a certain amount of time she reverts back to the Morrigan and you just gotta wait for the cooldown before you go again. Now there's only two gods here so it's not going to be much of a wheel when I bring this up. <sighs> and you can use this depending on what god you are uh, changing into as initiation. You could use it, um, say, they had an Ares on their team or your team. You change the Ares, you use it to try to get the, the beads or try to pull them to you. Say there's a Thanatos in the match. They get away with barely any health. You, you change into Thanatos and you execute. Or you change into a new Wa and you just freaking go global on them. That's essentially it. You know, it could be used to initiate. I've used it actually once. I changed, I panic changed into a Sylvanas. Where I was surrounded. Me and my Sylvanas on my team were surrounded. He ulted and stuff. Threw out his whiffs. I changed into him, ulted, threw out my, uh, my whiffs, did some extra damage and we came out of there. It was like a 2v4 situation and two Sylvanas' came out on top. Um, and this is this is shortly after release so she was still kind of buggy then but it worked out. So we're gonna go over her ultimate now. I'm gonna choose Ra just for S and G's. So first you hit Y once. Well I guess Ra is the only one I can choose. I can't choose Odin. And you can't see it because my overlay. Hold on. Let me turn that off. You see the the red wheel there. In a match, one the top will be blue, and that'll be your team. The red will be on the bottom, and that will be the enemy team. And you'll have uh, four gods on top, five gods on bottom in a conquest match to choose from. And all you do is you you take your right stick, and well, that's kind of bugging out right there. And you 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 would if there's more than one, you could select more than one. And you just hover over it. You see it's hovered. Now if you make the mistake of right trigger or whatever your basic attack, it will automatically go. If you hit Y again, it will automatically go. If you hit cancel, the portrait pops down there as you can see. Now my passive meter over there has the, the god I have selected. 
Now I can hit Y and hit trigger again, and it would do it. Or I can quickly spam Y twice to change. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We're just gonna hit Y twice, and then Alt this bitch. And I just, I was just raw for a second there. Boom, boom, boom. And I have all his abilities, all his things, and now I'm the Morgan. Ra is dead, and hopefully I won. The cooldown's not that bad now, but rank one, let me tell you, that's like two friggin' minutes at least. Two and a half minutes, maybe. I don't know. It just seems like sometimes I alt, I look down, and it's like 160 seconds, and I'm just like, my God. But that's okay. Now, this it works great, you know, like in, say, a, a Joust or, or um, Conquest, because she can become anybody. You can't counter her because she can become anybody in the match. She can become you. So she can counter you with you, which I've seen before. We've gone against um, a, a Mor the Morrigan uh, in the Joust match, and we had a Medusa, and she would just change the Medusa alt assault because we weren't expecting it. We didn't. All, we may not even bought beads because there was no reason on to buy beads, not thinking, oh crap, she could be freaking Medusa, and she would get us all petrified, and then it was just mayhem. It was just disgusting. Or you know. She's in the jungle somehow. You're ready to gank them. She changes into their jungler, changes into their guardian or whatever, and just boom, boom, boom. You know, there's a Bastet. Two Bastets. There's two of... It could be two of anything on that team, from your team or our team, essentially what it, what it boils down to. If you have a Bastet on your team, the Bastet alts, got cats out, you alt, six cats on the freaking freaking battlefield mayhem freaking mayhem anyway i the order you want to rank up her abilities are her two for the wave clear her one then her ultimate and then her three whenever you can't put it anywhere else that's pretty much what it boils down to because <sighs> you're gonna want the wave clear for those stacks because <gasps> you're gonna be building stacks for 75 stacks all right so I hope this video helped. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was beneficial to you and trying to learn the Morrigan. Uh, she hasn't been that out that much, so not many people need particularly a refresher. Uh, maybe people just put it off because she she was buggy at release and needed a ref needs a refresher. And that's why you're here. Leave a like, a comment if you want. Hit that sub button for more content coming down the line to figure out how to use that ultimate for the gods I have not gone over yet. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.